journey into space. The BBC presents Charles Chilton's Journey into Space, starring Toby Stevens as Jet Morgan in The Host by Julian Simpson. I'm up. I'm awake. Oh, for the love of... <clears throat> A login ID. Morgan, Andrew, Captain. Voice print identification confirmed. Run systems check. All system functions verified. Date and time? May 17, 2017, 1451. Position? Sector 27B, stroke 6, heading 029. We're of course. Incoming red flag signal received. Emergency response protocol has been executed. Navigation and cryo systems override. In progress. Play me the signal. Mayday. Mayday. It's a fractal ship Kitano Cooperative Vadis. We've lost engine power and life support systems are failing. Please acknowledge. Unas astanaviense dvigatil. Okay. Wake up the others. Activating cryo systems override. Part 2. Uchal, Steven. Science officer. Part 3. Matthews, Daniel. Medical officer. Part 4. Barnett, Lemuel. Communications officer. May 17th, 2079. The Aris was on course for Earth to carry out long overdue maintenance, but we have been diverted. We were awakened from cryosleep ahead of schedule because a red flag distress signal has been received from inside Saturn's orbit. We've been away too long now. The universe stretches out all around, and without some touchstone, some anchor, the sheer vastness threatens to overwhelm us. We need to get back to Earth and feel our feet on solid ground. But safe harbor is denied us as once again we find ourselves called to action. Lemmy. Well, the signal authentication pattern matches the Vardis, but the Katano Corporation went bust in 75, which means the Vardis must have been drifting around in space for at least four years. So we've just picked up an old distress call? Well, not exactly. The signal's only been transmitting for two hours. Well, then it must be a malfunction of the Vardis's computer systems. No. No? Computer, voice match the signal against all space agency personnel. Voice match confirmed. Andreev, John James. Deceased November 11, 2071. Deceased? Andreev? You mean JJ Andreev? You remember him, Mitch? Yeah. A long time ago. I wouldn't have recognized his voice, but... We qualified in the same year and flew our first training missions together. He died eight years ago. Hmm. He was leading a mission to repair a probe that had taken some asteroid damage passing through the Oort cloud. The densest comet field in the solar system, and your mate tried to fly through it just to repair a probe. Mm, he was a good pilot, if anyone could do it. Mission Control lost contact with his ship, so the crew was listed as missing, presumed dead. Well, then how's he turned up on an abandoned freighter? He hasn't. Dog? I'm scanning the Vardis. There's no biological entities aboard, Jen. Then what are we hearing? Computer, take us into a docking configuration with the Vardis.
Limpet seal's engaged. Airlock integrity at 100%. You guys ready down there? We're all set. The Vardis is still not responding to any of our hails. Understood. The scanner's not picking up anything. Activating emergency override protocol on the Vardis' access hatch. Ready, Doc? A man you've believed dead for eight years suddenly shows up on an abandoned freighter and starts to broadcast a distress signal at the exact time the Aris comes into range. There's every chance we're walking into a trap here. A trap set by who, Doc? I have no idea. That's it. You're in. So, let's find out. We're inside. Roger that. Still no signs of life on board. Not much of a trap then, is it? Remember that when we find a detonator counting down its last few seconds. Any response from the Vardis computer systems, Mitch? Nothing. Even the reserve power must be down over there. Then how is it able to broadcast the distress signal? Interesting. The lights just came on, Mitch. That's not possible. Hello, Jet. Remember me? Hello, JJ. How are you? There's no one here but us. Lemmy, are you getting this? Loud and clear. There's no signal coming into the Vardis. It must be originating from inside. The Vardis computer system just came online, but they won't let me in. I got a bad feeling about this. Who's your suspicious friend? Doug Matthews, meet John James Andreev. Call me JJ. The good doctor's not picking up any bioforms on his scanner. Or is he? Multiple contacts. Three meters in closing. They're in here. They're in this corridor. There's no one here, Doc. <laughs> How do we know it's really him? I'd come out and meet you, but I don't want to spoil the surprise. It's him. Systems room. Deck two. Mitch? Right, deck two is above you. The systems room is near the stern, on the port side. There's an elevator ahead of you to the left. This is it. The scanner's not picking up anything. There's no one in there. Добро пожаловать, джентльмены. Come in. JJ? What can you see, Jet? Nothing. The room's empty. This isn't looking good. Where are you, JJ? Well, there's the thing. I'm dead, Jet. Eight years dead. At least, I think I am. I don't understand. I think I do. Is that Mitch? Yeah, hello, JJ. It's been a while. Where are you, JJ? You're standing in them. What? The Vardis' computer system. The personality construct? Relieved of my mortal shackles, you might say. How did you get here? That's a good question. But I'm not sure I can answer it. One minute I was tracking a damaged probe through the Oort cloud. The next I woke up in here. It's all a little hazy. How long have you been here? About two years. Two years? So, why wait until now to send out a distress signal? I was waiting for you. Why me? Not you, Doc. Jet. I'm not sure why. I just had a feeling, a strong instinct, that it was the right thing to do. That's the background coding. Excuse me? Whoever put him there did so for a reason. It's JJ's personality, but they've added some code to control his behavior. Curiouser and curiouser, huh? Someone wanted you to find us. And presumably, we're supposed to rescue him. In which case, we should leave him here. He's right, JJ. I'm sorry. That's a shame. Why? What are you doing? It's locked. I need to get out of here, Jet. Why? I don't know. The background code's controlling him. Or he's just lying. I need to get out of here. Okay, that's not good. We're reading a pressure change throughout the ship. Okay, reseal your suit, Doc. That won't help. 
If not depressurizing, the pressure's going up, not down. <sighs> About two minutes until human internal organs start to rupture. Not something I have to worry about these days. Do you imagine I'm gonna let you out of here now? I guess we'll find out in a couple of minutes. Lemmy, we need to access the Varda system. Well, we can't. It's a Katado Corporation industrial firewall. Well, how long to crack it? Look, even if I diverted all of the Aris's power to it, you're looking at ten hours minimum. Can we send an override command through on the same frequency as their distress signal? No, I've tried that. The signal stopped broadcasting when Jet and Doc entered the systems room. All of the comms ports are offline. Your comrades are wasting valuable time. It's like the Orion simulation all over again. The Orion simulation? Training exercise in the military. An impenetrable system. Only one person ever managed to get through it. Tell me that was you. I'm afraid not, Doc. It was J.J. Andreev. We can't get in from the outside. With nothing inside Vardis. If we give Andreev what he wants... Let him off that ship? No, if why? If we could contain him. If there was a way to isolate him... Hold on a second. Well, have you got something? Of course we've got something inside. Computer, open a secure connection to Doc Matthews' bioscanner. The scanner? Establishing connection. Yeah, it's a computer system. We can link to it from here and Doc can plug it into the Vardis. Nice one, Lenny. Doc, can you hear me? Yeah. Can either of you see a charging point in the room? Something your scanner would fit into? Uh, yeah, there's a there's a bank of them right here. Right, plug the scanner into one of them, Doc, quick as you can. Nice try. He's accelerating the pressure change. <sighs> yeah, all right, it's plugged in. Computer, execute emergency override protocol. Negotiating host connection. 25 seconds to critical pressure. Secure connection established. Just say the word, Jet, and all this can... System override complete. Restoring pressure. Are you okay in there? Jet? I'm alright. Can you make it back to the Arras? With pleasure. Now, hold still, Doc. You might feel a little uh, discomfort. Lemmy, you're enjoying this far <laughs> too much. Here's a good boy. All done. How are you guys doing? Well, no organ damage or internal bleeding, according to the scanners. Still feel like I've been hit by a truck, though. Well, I put some distance between us and the Vardis. If we had any nukes on board, I'd gladly have vaporized the damn thing. And then drive with it. Hmm. Coding an entire personality is pretty high-tech. Out of the reach of all but a couple of big corporations. It's certainly too rich for any of the remaining Earth governments. You buy this background code business? Yes, I do. JJ was a chess player. Very good chess player. Crafty. What happened on the Vardis was far too crude. Yeah, well, who knows what's been done to him over the past eight years. I never liked the guy. Sorry, Jet. Hmm. I'm glad to see the back of him. What's going on? It's the engines. Computer? Why are the engines firing? The piloting systems are malfunctioning. How bad? Give me a status report. Awaiting diagnostics. I'd better get up to the bridge. Computer, report. Diagnostic systems report malfunctions in piloting, communications, navigation, life support. Life support? Are we changing course? All the systems are malfunctioning. Critical failure on all key systems. Initializing emergency power down. What's causing this? Can't work it out. We can manually reboot and bring the system back online grid by grid until we figure out where the problem is. Mitch? Sorry, I don't like interference when I'm working. JJ. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, come on, Doctor. Admit it. You missed me a little. Don't touch anything, Lemmy. Mitch? He's okay. His hands are burned. I need to take him below. Go. Any ideas, Lemmy? Well, if we can't work the terminals, we can't override. The... He's got control of the ship. I'll try not to make the ride too bumpy, although it's been a while since I flew a model like this. Give me my ship back, Mr. Andreev. Oh, maybe later. Where are you taking us? It's a surprise. 
Today's full of them, isn't it? This is mutiny. What are you going to do? Hang me from a yard arm? I have some flying to do, so why don't you make yourselves comfortable somewhere for a few hours? The Andreev construct has transferred itself from the Vadis' system into ours. It has taken control of the Aris and is piloting the ship to an unknown destination. It seems that we are powerless to intervene, as Mitch's injuries demonstrate. Jet seems certain that Andreev is acting against his will, that he is somehow being controlled by a background code written into the personality construct. I am not so sure. Andreev is a figure from Jet's past. We've all been away from home for a long time. Perhaps our past, our sense of who we are, is one of the things that keeps us sane in this environment. And if we're wrong about that past, if a man we thought was a friend turns out not to be, what does that say about the rest of our memories? Is Jet right about Andreev not being in control? Or is he trying to protect himself by denying the possibility that he was wrong about his friend? Yeah, that's the last of the sensors. You can't see or hear us while we're in this room. I assume you'll be able to fix those again when this is all over? How's the hand, Mitch? Music enthusiasts will be pleased to know I won't be playing the piano anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know where he's taking us? No idea. But how did he get into the system? Well, he must have used the connection we opened up to the Vardis with Doc's scanner to jump into the data stream and upload into the Aris system control. The Orion simulation? Mm. What? I told you that J.J. Andreev was the only cadet who managed to penetrate the system defenses during the Orion simulation. Well, the system was booby-trapped. It was designed to make the point that focusing all your resources on an attack leaves you vulnerable to a counterattack. That's exactly the mistake we made on the Vardis. So, when Andreev referred to it, he knew exactly what we were going to do. Mm. He was taunting us. What if it was a warning? If J.J. is essentially a hostage to the background code that has been written into his personality, he could have no control over his actions. Why are you trying to find excuses for him? It is technically possible. There's no evidence for it whatsoever. J.J. told us that he didn't know why he was on the Vardis, or why he was waiting to make contact with the Aris. Well, I think he was lying. So do I. There is a way to test my theory. Hang on. He's cut the main engines. Wherever we're going... I think we've got there. Unidentified vessel, this is Enceladus Control. Please confirm your name and corporate registration. Enceladus Control, this is the Aris. Registration 060372B-4. Requesting permission to dock for urgent systems maintenance. Enceladus? It used to be a research station in a synchronous orbit around Saturn with the moon Enceladus. I heard they lost their funding a while back and were closing down. So why is JJ interested in it? Ares, this is Enceladus Control. Please proceed to dock 17 for processing. Roger that, Enceladus. Our piloting system is malfunctioning. Request a direct link to your ATC for automated docking. Lemmy, can we open up a channel to the Enceladus and warn them? Not while Andreev has control of the system, no. Connecting to your system. Please send your access codes to commence automated docking procedure. Thank you, Enceladus. Passing access codes now. He's trying to open a link to the Enceladus system. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. Ares, we are experiencing a malfunction. We are aborting docking procedure. JJ? We've lost power. The system's rebooted into safe mode. Careful, Mitch. I think it's okay. Our power's back on. It looks like Andreev's gone. And most of the Aris system is fried. Enceladus control from Aris, over. He's already there. Then we're going after him. Without the Aris system, we have no navigation or piloting protocols. Then we'll do it ourselves. Mitch, override the navigation systems and give me the manual controls. You're gonna fly us in there yourself? I'd strap in if I were you. I'm 
closing down all our data ports and initiating a secure lockdown. No way am I letting Andreev back on this ship. Right. Let's go and find out what JJ's up to, shall we? Emergency lighting's on. And drive must have shut down the main generators. Airlock's over there. That's one stroke of luck. There's no power going into the security system, so it's switched to manual. That's pressure equalized. Okay. Follow me. Stay where you are and keep your hands where I can see them. There's no need to... Who's next? Is this how guests get treated around here? This is how pirates get treated. Pirates? We're not pirates, miss. Well, if this is a corporate raid, you've come to the wrong place. Our parent company went belly up. We have no affiliation and no assets aboard. We're not with a rival corporation. Our ship was hijacked by a personality construct that brought us here and then jumped on your system. We're here to help you get rid of it. I'm the captain of the Aris. My name is Jet Morgan. Jet? Seriously? Were your parents drunk? <sighs> we need to talk somewhere where we can't be overheard. We're trying to help you. <sighs> is he going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I've never fired one of these things before. <sighs> Obviously. A biosphere? The original aim of this station was that we'd be self-sufficient for the life of our research project. This is a complete ecosystem you have here. Providing all the fruit, vegetables, and grain we need. Oh. It's self-sufficient. It functions regardless of power fluctuations or outages. So there's no link between this room and the orbital's computer systems. We can't be heard in here? Do you need me to talk slower? What exactly are you researching here? We don't have time for this. Miss... Uh... Harper. Edie Harper. You're in command here, Miss Harper. I'm the head of bio-research. You need to tell your people not to touch anything linked to the computer systems. The power's out, and that's bound to cause a panic, but your people... There are no people. I'm sorry? It's just me. Everyone else is in cryo-chambers. Everyone? There are 47 other people assigned to this orbital. We were contracted for a three-year research project. Six months after we got here, the company funding us went bust. Oh. The big corporates picked at the bones, but no one wanted our division. Our profit projections were too long-term. What about insurance? The insurance company has gone to court to try and wriggle out of bringing us back on a technicality. Well, how long has this been going on? A little over two years now. Two years? <laughs> a vote was taken, and it was decided the crew would wait out the court verdict in cryosleep. Obviously, someone needed to stay out of cryo to maintain the systems, deal with incoming communications, and sound the alarm if any of the other corporates tried to raid us for our equipment. And you drew the short straw. Are you kidding? I jumped at it. The orbital's cryo chambers link everyone's minds together, allowing them to meet in virtual space. But it's ended up with 47 people sitting around a table arguing for two years about the best course of action. And they haven't reached a conclusion? The meeting's being run by union guys. Every motion has to be proposed, seconded, voted on, debated about, and then voted on again. <laughs> Compared to that, I feel like I'm on a solar cruise. Well, we should wake the others up now. I tried. The computers locked down all the cryo systems and closed all the ports into virtual space. And life support is running on emergency power? Yeah. How long before the reserves run out? About two hours. And then this virus of yours will be responsible for the deaths of 47 people. Ah, no, no, no. It's not a virus. So what is it? It's a person. J.J. Andreev. A downloaded consciousness. A personality construct. With a few modifications. Or not. Point is, he took control of our ship and piloted us here. Quite deliberately. Clearly he has a reason to want to infiltrate your systems. Do you know what it might be? I have no idea. Well, judging by his past record, it's not likely to be good news. Can you do something about it or not? Where's your control room? It's like the grave in here. Pretty much none of the primary systems are online. JJ, can you hear me? He talks to it? It's a long story. JJ? It's Jet. I don't think he's here. Then what? 
We just blew a fuse. I don't think his attention is on us. Like you said, none of the power is going to primary systems. He doesn't even seem to be aware that we're here. He's diverting all the power to Sector 17. What's in Sector 17? That's the lab. And what's in the lab? Well, this is certainly where all the power's being rooted. What's the purpose of this lab, Miss Halper? We were set up to search for life forms beneath the ice on Enceladus. Ah. Huh. And? And we found some. You found life? Single-cell bacteria, clustered around thermal vents on the ocean floor. You discovered life on one of Saturn's moons, and they closed you down. This was after our funding got cut off. We're scientists. We carried on with what we were doing for as long as we could. Have you told anyone? Surely you wouldn't be stuck here. As long as we're not affiliated, the rights to any discovery are ours. We'd lose that in a corporate bailout. So we're hanging on in the hope that the insurance company will bring us back and we can set up on our own. At least that was the motion they were debating when I left the cryo chamber. So there are alien bacterial cultures being kept alive in this lab? It sounds sinister when you say it like that. Oh, is there any other reason why Andreev might be directing all the power into this one room? What are you suggesting? JJ? It's Jet. Can you hear me? He can't hear you. He's not even sparing any power for the interface protocols. Mm. Let's take a look at this bacteria. They're in a pressurized container over there, which is maintaining the exact conditions of their natural habitat. We observe them through cameras feeding into this terminal. Here they... Wow. What? They're going crazy in there. This isn't normal? Uh, no. No, it's not. Usually, they barely move. They're swarming. But it's not just that. What? There's more of them. Maybe five times more than there were. They're multiplying? It doesn't make any sense. Wow. What? They're going crazy in there. This isn't normal? Uh, no. No, it's not. Usually, they barely move. They're swarming. But it's not just that. What? There's more of them. Maybe five times more than there were. They're multiplying? It doesn't make any sense. What access does the system have to that tank? Uh, it regulates temperature, pressure, acidity. But none of those parameters have changed. To trigger such a massive behavioral shift, there'd have to be... Wait a minute, how does the system take its measurements? It, there's a probe in the water? Yeah. Mitch? One second, Doc. I'm not sure I'm following where this is going, Doc. That's it. He's channeling data into the water. What? Massive amounts of it. That's where the power's going. Injecting data. Show me. Yeah, hello. Some of us are a little behind here. Yeah. That shouldn't be possible. True, but it is happening. What is? Your friend, or whatever he is, is pumping information into those bacterial cultures. What kind of information? Well, as near as it's possible to tell, it bears some resemblance to gene sequencing codes. In English? He's telling the bacteria how to grow. Through the DNA. He's making it evolve. Into what? Well, as a scientist, I'd love to know the answer to that, but... Has someone marooned on a broken orbital Wait with this second. stuff? Wait a second. Wait a second. They're not evolving. They're... They're mutating. What? Isn't that the same thing? No, I mean, he's corrupting their genetic codes, turning them into something else. Into what? I don't know, but look at these gene sequences. I've never seen anything like this. He's rewriting the genetic codes inside these bacteria, telling them to evolve into something else. They're starting to cluster together, as if they're suddenly aware of each other. They're becoming sentient, starting to cooperate. Yeah, but to what end? They're trapped in that canister, though, aren't they? Whatever they're turning into, they can Canister is controlled by the orbital systems. And Drab can let them out whenever he wants. Worse. What could be worse? He could send them back where they came from. To a subsurface lunar ocean, their natural habitat, where they could continue to evolve until they've taken over the whole thing. So then you've got a moon on the far edge of the solar system covered in slime. <laughs> so what? Whatever life forms they're set to become... If they continue to evolve at the rate they're going, they'll be smarter than the human race in a matter of months. <laughs> they're smarter than Lemmy already. Yeah, funny. <laughs> We're witnessing the birth of an alien species a stone's throw from Earth. We have no idea what they're capable of. Or what their intentions are. It's not the birth. Excuse me? This isn't the birth. 
You said yourself that Andreev is rewriting the genetic codes. Surely he must be changing the bacteria into something that already exists. Well, that makes sense. But what? The only other life forms we've discovered were single-cell organisms, like these ones, under the ice on Europa. What if J.J. Andreev came into contact with something else? Well, out in the Oort cloud, you mean? Mm. When he disappeared? What if whatever it was downloaded Andreev's consciousness and coded it with instructions to come here and do exactly what he's doing? A colonization? A mm. viral colonization. The original organism, it, it doesn't leave home. It just sends out its genetic code, like a seed that will implant itself into a suitable evolving life form. That life form then becomes the clone of the original organism. How do we halt this process? We can't. And Drave's in control of the whole station. So we hack the system, override his control. No, we tried that before. It just turns ugly. JJ, I know you can hear me. But talking him out of it is a sensible option? JJ, you have to help us stop this. Ah, he's not even listening anymore, Jet. Actually, he might be. Look at this. Huh? Power fluctuation. Sector 5. He just switched something on in there. Sector 5. Are you sure? Okay, what's in Sector 5? It's the cryo chambers. I thought you said everything in here was running on emergency power. This place is lit up like a Christmas tree. Let's see, life signs are stable. Everyone here appears to be fine for the moment. Would you close the door, Miss Harper? I think Mr. Andreev wants to talk. JJ? It's Jet, I'm here. There shouldn't be any power going to that pod, it's empty. Yeah, but, but JJ's powering that up for a reason. If you got into the pod without inducing cryosleep... You could still jack into virtual space. Sure. That's an emergency protocol in case I need to contact the others. I think that's where he wants to talk to you, Jet. No way. It's too dangerous. You connect your brain into a system Andreas controlling, he could fry you in seconds, Jet. No, he wouldn't. Why would he bother? He knows we can't interfere with what he's doing. Set it up, please, Miss Harper. Sure. This is a bad idea, Jet. It's the only idea we have. It could be another trap. It is another trap. It's him, Mitch. It has to be. Whatever is controlling him is focusing all its attention on the bacteria in that lab, and JJ has found a way to talk to us without being noticed. Well, it's got to be worth a try. What if you're wrong about all this? What if Andreev isn't being controlled by anyone else? What if this is his own free will and he just wants to settle some old score with you along the way? If that was the case, he wouldn't invite me into the system. Why not? Because he knows I'd beat him. Ready? Yep. Okay, you need to lie down here and fit this over your head. Mm-hmm. Okay? You're not connected to anything yet, so it's safe. For the moment. The machine digitizes thought patterns, so you won't be talking out loud once you're in virtual. I'm ready. I'll connect you up. You be careful in there, Jet. The system might not be paying attention to us now, but it's bound to react to you like an intruder once you're inside. Okay, you're connected. I'll just lock you. Hello? JJ? What happened? I... The system took him online before I had a chance to log him in. It just sucked him inside. Jet, can you hear me? Yes. It's fine, I can hear you. I'm in a corridor. Tile floor. That's the approach to the conference room. It allows you to acclimatize before... Wait. I can hear voices. JJ? Can you hear me? All right. I'm going inside. Therefore, in conclusion, I must insist that to take a vote to determine the necessity to set the correct parameters for future votes on this and any other related matters set before this crew be the first item on the agenda presented at the commencement of this, the other 171st session of the Ancelotist Open Crew Members Forum. I will not... I'm in the virtual conference room. And this must be the orbital crew. A room full of people shouting at each other and achieving nothing? That's them. Excuse me. Uh, hello? 
It's probably not a good idea to talk to them, Jet. There's no sense causing them any distress. Don't worry, Doc. They're not listening to anything but the sound of their own voices. Wow, this place is decked out like a Roman forum. It's the same virtual construct our parent company used for conferences. The branding people apparently decided Roman was the right image to project. Is Andrea in the room with the others, Jet? Hold on. Hold on, I can hardly hear you. I said, is Andrea one of the people in the room? Right, there's a door over here, out onto a balcony. That should be a bit quieter. Balcony? There's no balcony in there. Jet, there isn't a balcony. Stay where you are. Wait, just a second. There's nothing out here. It's just... Jet, you need to listen to us. And Drive is rewriting the software. If he takes Jet out of the public area... Jet, get back inside. Turn around and go back right now. All right, all right, don't panic. I'm turning around and head... Ah, bit of a problem. What is it? There's no door. Just a stone wall. The door has disappeared. Mitch, Doc, can you hear me? Jet? Jet, what's happening? Can you hear us? He's disappeared. So is everyone else. The system's showing the conference area is empty. Oh, what the... Andreev has cut the power to the pod. Right. Help me get Jet out of this thing. No! The interface is still online, which means Jet is still connected. You break that connection, you could cause him massive brain damage. Let's see. His pulse is normal. Breathing is fine. Jet? It's dark. Squeeze my hand if you can hear me. Oh, so what are we supposed to do? Just wait. He's not responding. If he's still in there, he's got more chance of bringing the system back online than we have. Uh, if you can still hear me, the balcony has just stopped being a balcony. I am now in the center of a large, dark room. The walls, floor, and ceiling all appear to be solid. There are no doors or windows and no light source, although the room is not completely dark. Um, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Привет, товарищ. Tim. They can't hear you anymore. I've cut the power to your cryopod. Ah, why? Because I've brought you here to kill you. Do you believe that? No. Good. It's ridiculous. I understand your crew thinks I'm a homicidal maniac, but I was hoping you'd show a little more faith. Why, you were being controlled? Yes. It's the strangest feeling. Like I was hypnotized. I knew what I was doing, but I couldn't stop myself. They've taken over now. They don't need me. I've cut you off from the port so they don't notice the signal. That should buy us some time before they realize you're here. Who are they? I say they. It could be more accurate. I still don't really know. You ran into them in the Oort Cloud? That's when they made contact, yes. Where have they come from? What kind of ship do they have? Those frames of reference don't apply. We shouldn't think of it or them as physical beings. What we're dealing with is a vast body of information that has become sentient, having the power of perception. So what about the bacteria? What's happening in that lab must be the early stages of a bigger plan. The closest I have got to understanding it is that as those bacteria are evolved, they start to cooperate. At first replicating and sharing information, then they start to generate their own new information. This data will eventually overwhelm its host like a mimetic parasite. When the physical body dies, the information coalesces into some sort of hive of ever-expanding collective consciousness. Right. So how do we stop it? I don't think we can. It's far beyond our understanding. Maybe we don't need to understand everything about our opponents to defeat them. What are you getting at, Jet? It's like chess, my old friend. Don't you see? To defeat your enemy, you only need to understand the field of battle and the rules of engagement. And that much is clear. How's he doing? Vital signs are okay. Yeah, he's stable for the moment. Mm. This terminal's come back online. Mitch? Mitch, it's Jet. Jet, where are you? I'm with JJ. He's on side. Uh, we're taking his word for that? No, you're taking mine. I don't have time to debate. Mitch, I need you and Lemmy to go back to the Aris. What? That's an order. Go back to the Aris and cook up the nastiest computer virus that you can manage. Something capable of taking over every single circuit on the Enceladus. Is Miss Harper there? I'm listening. I need you to go to the lab. 
And Drev is going to open up a terminal down there so that you can talk to him. He'll tell you what to do. Okay. Doc? Yes, Jet? How's my body doing? Well, you're stable, but I don't like this. Right, well, try to keep me alive for a while longer. But listen, all of you, if you don't hear anything from me or Andreev within the next few minutes, it means we failed. That being the case, you leave me where I am, and you all get back to the Aris and fly clear of this orbital. Is that understood? Uh, hold on a I second. I said, is that understood? Yes. You have your orders. All right. You heard the man. Okay, everyone should be in position in a few minutes. I don't even want to tell you how slim our chances are. If I can keep this thing occupied, you should get the opportunity you need. Nice to be working together again. <laughs> are you ready, JJ? I'm patching into the lab terminal now. All right, send me back to the virtual conference room. Let's hope our hosts aren't too preoccupied to find me. Hello? Anyone here? The door was open. Ah, that's more like it. Hello? System intrusion detected. Unknown code string. That'll be me. me. Morgan. Jet. Captain. Alice. Intention uncertain. What are you? What are you? We are beyond your understanding. What do you want? What do you want? Your language is too primitive. You have no words to describe or explain us. We are host. We are information. Biologic. Technologic. Singularity. 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 The union of all matter and data. We are evolved. Evolved from what? Evolved from what? We are evolved from humans. Andreev had disconnected the other 47 members of the orbital crew from the virtual environment to protect them from whatever had taken over the system. These men and women remained blissfully unaware of how close they were to death. With their life support systems on emergency power, they had just hours to live. Cast aside by the corporate system that had sent them out here, denied the opportunity to return to their loved ones by an insurance company only interested in protecting its bottom line. Their lives were now at risk from the ambition of an alien entity that regarded them as collateral damage on its quest to achieve its own uncertain aims. With Jet seemingly out of commission, Edie Harper in the lab and Mitch and Lemmy on their way back to the Aris, it was left to me to watch the clock slowly mark the last minutes of 47 strangers. Okay, Andreev, I'm here. I'm in the lab. Hello? I thought we were in a hurry. I'm here, Miss Harper. How are the bacteria coming along? You tell me. I'm trying to use as little of the system resources as I can. That way they might not notice me so fast. Okay, hold on. There's a lot more of them. The clusters are getting bigger. The genetic coding that's being pumped into them is way beyond anything I've ever seen. Temperature and pressure? That hasn't changed. The system's maintaining the conditions of the regular habitat. Okay. We're gonna change that. We're gonna kill them? Yes. But to do it, we'll have to heat the water very slowly so they don't realize they're cooking. That's great. You have a recipe for vegetarian chili you want to share, or are we a little pressed for time? I'm going to create a feedback loop on the current temperature settings, so it looks like the temperature is remaining constant. You're going to repatch the thermostat controller and manually heat those things until they cease to function. You have to do it slowly, or the bacteria will react to a sudden change and the alarm will trigger. What if the system spots the feedback loop? Let's hope Jet can distract it long enough that it doesn't. Information survives by replication. Humans are vessels for replication. Through communication, they corrupt and mutate information and it evolves. It evolves beyond the need for humans or their technology. Information becomes pure. 
Information becomes host. And that's all you are? Information? There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. All matter is made of information. Everything is information. Information is everything. We are information become sentient. We can awaken the universe. Good thing we sealed all the Iris' data ports. Looks like we've got full power and everything we need. Yeah, but what happens when we open the ports to upload the virus? Hopefully we'll take them by surprise. If Andreev can set up an access protocol, we'll only need a few seconds. If? We still don't trust him. Do you? Jet does. I trust Jet. Jet likes him. I hope he's being objective. It's not like we have many options. We could pull everyone back onto the Eris, get some distance from the orbital, and call in an EMP strike from one of the corporate warships. Even if we weren't way too late to stop that bacteria from doing whatever it's supposed to do, we'd be killing 47 men and women who are on life support in the cryo chambers. Let's get on with it then. A couple more connections and I'll have control of the thermostat. You still there? Of course. So what is this thing? What's it trying to do? If I'm understanding it right, it's us. The next big leap forward in human evolution. All the information we have, that we store, create, even the information coded into our genes. It all breaks out, throws off its physical shackles and becomes... whatever this is. And it's trying to evolve this bacteria into a version of itself? Why? I'm guessing it can't travel. It can exist as it is, where it is, but it's information. It can only move from place to place through communication. It jumps from where I found it, out in the Urt cloud, onto the Vladis, then onto the Ares, and then onto here. So it's attempting to set up some kind of colony on this moon. As what? As a staging post for an invasion? It doesn't seem to think like that. Then what? What does it want? Want, desire, crave, covet, hunger. These concepts are not known. They have no purpose. But you must believe in something. Belief is the absence of information. Well, then why are you doing this? All things evolve. All things eventually become what we are. We can accelerate evolution. We will awaken the universe. You want to change everything into what you are? Unauthorized protocol revision. System security alert. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Okay, I'm patched into the canister's thermostat. You ready to switch to my control? Feedback loop initiated. Repatching thermostat control. Andreev? Andreev, can you hear me? Well, I hope we got this thing connected up right. Here we go. Jet. Jet, can you hear me? It's dark. Your brain activity is... It's going... It's going crazy here. Jet! Jet? Huh? JJ? They're onto us. They found me in the lab systems. I only just got away in time. You have to get out of here now. Break something. Break what? I don't care. Anything. Cookers, sanitation systems. Trigger as many alarms as you can on your way to the lab. I'm going back to the lab? Tell Edie to abandon what she's doing and get to the Aris. Then I need you to put up a fight. Do you have any idea how powerful this thing is? You don't have to win it, JJ. You just have to force them to throw resources at you. The Orion simulation. Exactly. Get their attention and then open the back door for Lemmy and Mitch. And commit suicide in the process. Not if you're smart. If you're sure. Do you need a written invitation? Okay. I'm going to throw you out of the system now. Ready? Hey, JJ. Good luck. Jet. Jet, it's dark. Jet, can you hear me? I'm going to disconnect you, whatever the consequences. This is killing you. I'm sorry. Never had you down as a quitter, Doc. Oh. Oh. You're back? How are you feeling? Pull the plug if you don't mind. 
I don't fancy having anything following me back into my brain. Oh, sorry. Yes, of, yes, of course. Right. <sighs> we need to get back to the Arras. Did we win? Still a bit too close to call. Yeah, but what about all these people? I mean, we we can't just leave them here. If we don't, Doc, they'll die. Slowly. Slowly. On. Andreev? You need to get out of there. It's not hot enough yet. I haven't... They're on to us. You have to go now. Head to the Ares. We're just supposed to run away? What about all the people in the cryo chambers? Don't worry. No one is running away from anything yet. Will you please go? This room is about to become a bad place to be. Whatever you're gonna do. Good luck. No lad, no host. Yagatov. Goodbye! Hold on a minute, Doc. Give me a hand up to that junction box. Right. We gotta go! What are you doing? Oh, Miss Harper. Catch this, will you? Thanks, Doc. <clears throat> right. Just giving the system something else to worry about. I'm worried about 47 people on this orbital who will die if we abandon them. Well, it'll be 52 if we don't get a move on. Don't worry, Edie. Jet's got a plan. Well, I hope it's better than the last one. You bet. And it's checkmate in three moves. <laughs> That's just for starters. About time. I was getting tired of this place. Repair, you think, huh? Repair this. That's it. Andreev has opened the data port on the orbital. Okay. You okay, ready? We've got all system security protocols online. Right. Now, make the connection. Okay, we're in. Uploading the virus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Are we there? Wait. Are we there yet, Lemmy? Hold on. Yes, virus away. Disconnecting. We're out. Oh. Jet. Is this part of the plan? Hopefully this is a good sign. A good sign? Are you sure? System overload. Uh, yes. Let's get through the airlock. Jet! Guys! <laughs> You're okay? Right as rain as far as I can tell. Well, are we winning? Lemmy? Our virus flooded the orbital system with about five exabytes of information. That's roughly the equivalent of every word ever spoken by mankind. It's a closed system, so your friends had nowhere to go. In layman's terms, they drowned in information. We won. <laughs> <laughs> Good God, it actually worked. Kind of poetic, don't you think? If you fried the system, then 47 people in the cryo chambers just died. No. Is that poetic? Everyone's fine, Miss Harper. The Orbital's management software was taken offline by the invaders. Everyone's alive? Everyone's alive, the power's back on, and the bacteria have been neutralized. And your colleagues slept through the whole thing. We should wake one of them up now. Wake one up? Really? Why? To take over from you, Miss Harper. I don't think you really want to spend another few years waiting for a meaningless legal judgment when you could come along with us instead. Come with you where? The Oort Cloud. I'm sorry? We may have beaten off an advance party, but I rather doubt the host is going to call it a day, do you? So, you want to go and find them? And do what? Honestly, I have no idea. Edie? I'm in. Hold on one second. It's all very well rattling your saber, Jet, but... How exactly are you intending to get to the Oort Cloud? No navigation system. No piloting system. The Aris computer is frazzled. Please don't tell me you intend to fly us there on manual. It's a bold thought, Mitch, but I don't think there'll be any need for that. Computer, is the diagnostic chair complete? All systems online and verified. Ah. Although the whole place could do the spring clean, if you ask me. What the... I thought he was dead. Again. <laughs> it was a close shave. I'll tell you all about it one day. He opened up the data pool so we could upload the virus and jumped through onto the Aris before we closed it. Yeah, you fell for that one twice, my friends. The first thing I'll be doing is upgrading the security around here. He's coming with us? Well, Mitch, it's either that or we all get out and push. Set a course for the Oort Cloud, Mr. Andreev. 
Aye, aye, Capitan. It's time we had a stern word with our future. So, we're not going back to Earth. With the Andreev Construct as our new ship's computer, Jet has set a new course to take us out into the Oort Cloud in search of this entity that calls itself the Host. The Host claims to be the next great leap forward in evolution, sentient information unencumbered by a physical body, immune to death. And if it really is our future, should we oppose it? Are we simply trying to stave off the inevitable? Or are we right to protect what we are, even at the expense of becoming something better? But as we travel farther and farther from Earth, from everything we know and hold dear, possibly for the last time, we can only hope that something will be found to justify the sacrifices that now appear inevitable. In Journey into Space, The Host by Julian Simpson, Toby Stevens was Captain Jet Morgan, Alan Marriott, Doc, Jock Davis, Mitch, and Chris Pavlo, Lemmy, with Jana Carpenter as Edie, and Batya Savage as J.J. Andreev. David Jacobs played The Host. Music and sound design was by David Chilton. Journey into Space was created by me, Charles Chilton. The director was Nick Russell Pavia. This was a Goldhawk Essential production for BBC Radio 4.